What's up guys, Basil here from TechnoTalk uh, with the second attempt at recording this uh, tutorial because I hate it when I get interrupted. But anyway, um, we're doing tutorial number 7 and sorry for there being such a gap between this and tutorial number 6. It's been like almost two weeks I think. Um, but uh, a reason for that is pretty much I've, I've just been kind of stalled in Java because I was taken over a bit by Adobe CS5. Um, I got actually got production premium on Friday. CS5 and um, I got the student edition and you have to like submit proof of your of your eligibility like your student-ness online and I did and it's like oh it takes up to two business days so I had to wait till Wednesday all that fun stuff that doesn't matter right now well it doesn't mean that you might you guys might get some uh, After Effects or Photoshop tutorials in the future which is cool near future uh, but for now we're still in Java so let's go over in this tutorial, I wanted to go over a couple things. First off, um, last time we created this simple program right here, or at least something similar to it, where it, you know it just says, "Hello, I'm a simple program. How do you do?" And then it asks to run the program again. And we learned all about how you know you're scanning the input, and if it's yes, it's true. If no, it's false. And then if it's true, it repeats. If no, then it doesn't. This is all good and dandy for using a for loop in some cases, but. In this case in particular, and there are other ca and a lot of times you're going to find that there's really no need for all of this. You can do it a lot more concisely. Concisely, is that even a word? You can do it in a much more concise way, um, in a much simpler way, using a do-while loop. So we're going to try to create the same program with the run program again and everything using a do-while loop. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of all this. Get rid of all this string, yes or no. Actually, no. Let's just get rid of the if statements. Let's get rid of the boolean and the for loop. So here we are just with our program. Oh, wait. There. Okay. So here we are just with our program, you know. Uh, it just says stuff right now. We've already defined our scanner. Um, so the first thing we want to do is remember when we learned the do while loop, the top thing, all you need to do is say do, open bracket, and then after your code, just have an end bracket. So right now we're telling it to do this. No matter what. There is no way... There's no possible way that when we run this program, it won't say all this at least once. But now we're going to have to make a while. So we could put a while, and then we only want it to do it again if the user inputs yes, right? So it's much simpler if we just say yes or no equals yes. So that when yes or no equals yes, it does it again. Now you may notice that it's giving us an error here. It's saying that yes or no cannot be resolved. The reason for that is because we are defining yes or no. We are um, initializing it here. Here. Do you hear that, that weird way that I said that? We're saying the string yes or no. We're saying it inside of the do loop. So it's like inside the loop. So it, it, this goes along with this. As you see, it's outside of the bracket. So it doesn't know what this is yet. So the, there's a simple way to fix this. Really, we just need to tell it what yes or no is before the, the loop. We, we need to do it outside of the loop, pretty much. So just before the do real quick here, we can just say string yes or no, and then semicolon. And then we don't want to put like equals scan.next or anything here, because then it, it's going to ask the user before it does all the other stuff. So all we need to do is define it there, and then here just get rid of the string, so that we're not creating something new. Remember, we've already defined the string yes or no, so we all we need to do is here say yes or no, and it should recognize it, because it's already done it before. And then now, when we do this, it'll look for yes or no up here, it already knows what it is, so it'll be able to do this. So there's the beauty, and we run it, and it says, hello, I'm some program, how do you do, run program again. If we say yes, it will run it again. If we say no, it won't. Now, there are a couple flaws in this program, and there were a couple flaws in the last one, too, is that imagine if we run this, and we say yes, and it does all that, but imagine if we didn't say no, but we didn't say yes. I mean, there's a lot of buttons on the keyboard. Um, now, we only have it set if the condition is yes. So what if we put techno talk rules? it finds it as a no because what we did is we only told it what to do if it's yes we didn't tell it what to do if it's no so really it's gonna end if it's anything other than yes so they could put anything and the program would read it as a no which I mean you know it may not be that big a deal but you may not really like that okay um really if you really wanted to be picky you could use the for loop and then do an else and then say invalid input and all that stuff so the for loop is definitely if you want to be more picky and more pre precise but the do while loop is a nice thing to know now I want to go over uh, something real quick um, about 
the yes or no dot equals because I know we never really went over that. Now let's say that we are we have an integer. Okay, we're saying integer x equals scan dot oops scan god dang it scan dot next int. Right. So this statement right here is going to ask the user to input something, right? And it's an it's going to be an integer, and it will store the value of that integer in x. Now, if we wanted to do something specific based on if the integer equals something, we could say if, and then remember when we do if statements, how there's the condition in here. Remember if, and then you have a condition like or like a statement like x is less than y, x is, y is greater than z, stuff like that. Well, in here. Um, equal to is just the same as, you know, greater than or less than. So we would have to put double equals, though, because that's just the way it works. And then we could say 10. So basically, we're saying that if x is equal to 10, then it'll do something. Now, that makes sense. I mean, equal to, I mean, the double equal to is kind of just something you have to know because that's different from, you know, defining something. But it's the same thing as if you were writing in math or in algebra and you were saying that x is equal to something, you know, you would put one equal, but still, it's the same thing. Now, the difference is that, let's say string was, I mean, let's say x was a string. Well, there's a lot of things that go wrong, but let's just say that it was a next line, so it's going to scan the next line. Now, we couldn't say x is equal to, I don't know, um, Basil. We couldn't say this. Now, the reason that you can't say this, I'm sure there's some complicated reason, but the only thing that you really need to know is that strings are different than normal numbers. I mean, you can't use this operator with a string. So, you just need to know that whenever you're using a string, instead of using the double equals, you have to put dot equals. And then you would have to put basil, oh, fail, in parentheses, and you have to have the double parentheses because, you know, just look at it and they would have to be in quotations. So this is just something that you have to memorize, but really it means the exact same thing. And if anything, it's simpler to me than the double equal sign, because if you read it, it just reads x equals basil. It's very simple. So it's just something you have to remember that when you're using a string, you can't use the double, um, you can't use the operator of the double equal sign. You have to use dot equals. And we'll go over how to do the other operators with strings later, but that's just something that I was using, and some of you may have been confused, so I wanted to clear that up. So I think that's pretty much all for now. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I can do in this tutorial. I think that's pretty much all. I'll, 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 I'll try to start something new in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching. This has been another episode of... Another episode? What the hell? Another tutorial from Basil for TechnoTalk. Check back at the channel, subscribe um, if you want to continue seeing some t awesome tutorials, and make sure that you might be seeing some After Effects, Photoshop, Premiere, all these different tutorials soon. So, um, yeah, see ya.